Hi, David. Hey, Gerald. <laughs> nice to see you again. You too. Um, we met each other in Mysore a long time ago, and uh, we reconnected uh, two years ago, so it's good yeah. to, to see you again. Yeah, it's so a very happy connection for me. Yeah, so yeah. it's good to welcome you in uh, Ashtanga Yoga Paris. And, um, Thank you. I hope you, you enjoy the, the space and the, the workshop. Very much, yes. Great. Um, just wanted to ask you a little bit um, about your practice, you know, how it has evolved over the years. So as I just said, we, we met a long time ago in Mysore and obviously uh, we were both uh, younger and, you know, a bit different physically, let's put it that way. Yeah. So um, I know how my practice has changed, has evolved over the years and I wanted to, to yeah. ask you how did your practice evolve over the years? So if you can just uh, tell us a little bit about it. I have a very, uh, I spend a lot of time on asana mm -hmm. still, um, but it's really different than back then. Mm -hmm. And so it's evolved into something, um, I do um, less postures, but I stay longer in the postures mm -hmm. and um, I work with, uh, it's funny, because I, I don't like do like first series or second series mm -hmm. per se, mm -hmm. but, I, but I, don't, I don't really make up my own thing either. I, um, I work slower and I focus on certain themes like um, standing poses, for instance. I, I, spend, I can spend, I don't know, two hours on, on that just a little group of standing postures. Mm -hmm. But it's all different. It's like, uh, it's a very different feeling about it and a different uh, reason why even mm -hmm. I do it. I do it for, mm, it's hard to describe, but it's for, uh, it's, it's contradictory because it, it's very physical in the sense, but it's not at all like uh, athletic type of physical or sport, whereas that's how it was before. It's kind of very gymnastic and a, very, a lot of speed and rhythm and doing those series and sweating. And now I, I it's more like uh, I see it as yantra, you know, like this um, a cont a meditative device through the body and through the physical vehicle. And so I'm working with the skeletal lines and uh, like using principles of the Yoga Sutras in the asana itself. And so it's, and I see it all as like a, one consciousness, one meditation, but I'm still doing triangle and revolving triangle and I'm still lifting up and jumping back or uh, doing the poses of the primary series or second. And, um, so, the, and also I see it very energetically too, like uh, with moving prana, so raising, generating energy and, and directing prana along the axis. And I feel very inspired by that Ashtanga is, um, kind of gives you the tools to do what's in the Hatha Yoga Pradipika. Mm -hmm. So I follow that. Um, there's a call the language of yoga, energy language about the nadis and the bandhas and the mudras and um, these things. And so I'm working with, with that, with more like hatha yoga, with taking that out of the ashtanga or extracting it. And so then it makes more emphasis on the inversions too. So I spend a lot of time working with shoulder stand and variations and headstand. And, um, and then I also do uh, pretty uh, in-depth pranayama practice. Mm -hmm. I work with the sequence that I learned from Guruji. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that those two go together really well for me, like the, seeing the prana, the pranic possibilities in the asana practice through the working with the pranayama. And, so I still don't um, really have like a formal meditation practice because I'm so still steeped in this um, Hatha yoga and that's where I really get my uh, inspiration and where I'm exploring. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you, you use props too? Use a lot of props, yeah. Um, This has changed too because in the past, yeah, traditionally we, we didn't, wouldn't do that. No, we wouldn't do that. I mean, I, I like, I, but I minimize it or I, I use them very strategically and like, um, and very particular, like how I use them. Um, and I'm aware of using them. Like, um, I use the wall a lot for different things, um, for a kind of grounding. Part of what's happened is, so this whole idea that everything is just this one position. And so, like, a lot of days, I don't want to do, when I do, like, my forward bends, I don't want to go all the way down. It's like it's hard on my body, and so, but I still want, like, the, the, the whole thing that's happening, the rooting of the legs and the lengthening of the spine. And so I, I'll take, uh, I use the Mysore carpets, I, like, several of them. The, so prison, kind of, the prison mat. The prison the, mat, the, the, exactly. The prison like mat. The, right. Um, instead of a block. So I, I like the material better, but it's also like kind of, it's a little closer to Ashtanga. It's not like I'm coming in with my blocks and my strap and stuff. So, um, but I um, definitely use, and I use um, support for shoulder stands so that I can stay for a long time. And so uh, I definitely use them, but very sparingly and um, strategically. Yeah. Yeah. I like what you said about the, the, the posture we, uh, that we really need, uh, you know, one posture, you know, like uh, I, I listened to your, your talk for Friday, Friday evening workshop, yeah. and you were saying that um, we, we really need one posture, you know, and from that posture, you know, uh, all the others evolve, you know, yeah, and yeah. that's what, um, that's kind of what we teach too, that's kind of uh, the, the main philosophy in our teaching in the studio, like, yeah, how many postures do you need, really? You know, you don't need, you don't need hundreds of yeah. postures. You know, basically you need one or two postures, you know, a good standing posture, you know, samastiti, yeah. and a good sitting posture. Yeah. Because basically, you know, this is all you need, right? So if you can maybe explain a little more about that, because I, I, I found it interesting that uh, your kind of philosophy of the practice kind of um, join what we teach and what we think. So yeah, if you could just. Uh, and it's just so funny. It, it's a, I think it's a natural evolution. Mm -hmm. So it's like so I started studying with Patavi Joyce in 1993. Mm -hmm. So that's <laughs> that's a lot of years, right? And I've never really stopped. Mm -hmm. And so it's natural that to me it's very natural that y you you wouldn't want to keep. The, the, the answer isn't more asanas and more series. It's gonna, uh, eventually you're going to go, wait a minute, and start turning back the other way. And, um, and then, and so, because it's really, it's a perspective that you're coming to. It's a, it's a consciousness and a, a kind of, uh, what are you paying attention to? That's what you're trying to shift. So you're trying to pay attention internally trying to use your senses different, use your body differently, use your mind different, and uh, quiet the mind from a lot of outer things. And so th that is a state of mind. It's not a position. Yeah, right? it, it, it becomes more subtle. You're, yeah. you're refining the practice. At first, it's very gross. But then with the years of practice, you're refining it, and you pay more attention to the little details that before were not available to you. Exactly, right? yeah. And I remember Patabi, I mean Guruji, saying that, and I was really puzzled by what he said, that Ashtanga is not physical exercise, it's internal exercise. Yeah. And at first I was just, hmm, it's not physical? <laughs> because, I mean, you know, when you do second or third series, it looks pretty physical, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. But uh, after you understand, like you, you talked about prana, working the prana, working energetically in the position and so on. Yes, yes, I yeah. very much agree with that. But at first, this is not accessible to the person no. who starts. It takes years and years of practice before refining it and seeing the more subtle aspect of the practice, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, the, and it's also, the, I feel that the variety in the asanas is a, it's a very much a ener energy raising thing. It's like kundalini. And the, 
in a way then when it, as a beginner we're very wasteful with our energy mm -hmm. and we, we ha and so this whole idea of mudra of sealing in energy see so you learn how to do that and so you learn how to contain that life force so it's not so hard to raise it and so something and then that idea of stillness right that because like movement and activity becomes undesirable whereas before you needed it to actually focus and concentrate then it, it turns around and becomes a distraction actually it becomes like um counterproductive and so you because you got the, you've raised the energy and so you can get more subtle and just be in one position and i also for me that it there's a literal aspect to it like it because we say it kind of poetically or you hear it that oh there's one universal asana but i i'm saying that it's actually a physical thing mm -hmm. and that and so when you do triangle or you do marichyasana d it, you're really are it's a lot like samastiti mm -hmm. and and um, in a physical sense and in an energetic sense in in every sense mm -hmm. and um and so in that way um you don't need as many postures but it also changes then like what 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 you value about doing a posture like what's and that's where the props would come in or um, a different version of the pose yeah. based on yeah you you experiment more in inside yeah. the same position there's so many different uh, possibilities yeah. you know it is not one way to do an asana because everybody has a different body so yeah. to say that okay you have to do this position this way and this is the only way doesn't make sense no it, it doesn't make sense at all yeah you know it because uh, everybody's different so everybody's going to have a different expression of the pose right so yeah yeah, yeah it, it, but then also though behind that different expression is certain principles mm. that everyone yeah. can go by. Yes, of course. And that's really cool to me. Like um, this really leads my practice and my teaching, which is so because so how do you come about your version of the posture? Mm -hmm. So it's and so it leads to things for me like um, every posture is uh, is intended to have you encounter your limits. So and and force you to compromise. And so but and when you're learning you you just compromise any way it doesn't you don't even think about it you just sort of try to do your posture your best you can and then whatever it ends up you just do it but as you learn you actually you make choices about how to compromise so do i lift the back heel or do i shift over here do how do i separate my arms or or how do i do it like in what way and so in, in that way, you are, the the possibilities that you're exploring are based on kind of themes that come from this one position and this one uh, consciousness that, the, the, and that consciousness is so interesting, you know, in it because it's also specific. Mm -hmm. Like even though you can't, you know, it's mystery. You can't. Talk, you can't really name it. You can only kind of get at it by words that don't quite make it. But at the same time, it is specific. Like, right, that's, so that it's infinite. And it is all-pervading. It, it's omniscient. So it's, it has these qualities that you're, you're actually trying to emulate and to experience through... Um, how you'll explore your asanas or your breathing, mm -hmm. and <laughs> yeah, it, it's in, it's interesting what you said that we waste a lot of energy, and I find this true, especially when you're younger, because you have big amounts of energy. Right? Yeah. You have so much energy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's spend it. You know, <laughs> so you can waste it. You know, like by doing crazy asanas, crazy practice, and so on. Yeah, but yeah. as as the aging process sets in you realize that you have much less energy and I think you're becoming wiser how you're going to manage it and use it, right? Yeah. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Because uh, we don't have, you know, the same capacity as we had like 25 or 30 years ago, obviously, I right? know, and, then, and look at us. You look so good. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> and you can see that there's so much discipline. So the mind is directed and, and, and it's because you've got a big job. 
with the, your teaching at the yoga and, and me too. It's like, and so you, it's not just that we have less energy or, it, but we're also just more clear about how we want to spend our energy. And so way more directed and, and willing to uh, cut out what doesn't belong in order to, uh, to do what's valuable and yeah. what, what's important to us and also but what's important to the people around us yeah, and to the world. To use it stuff. more efficiently, yeah. uh, more efficient in the way we spend it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, think you're, I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> so do you, um, do you do like pranayama outside of, the, outside of the, the, the practice itself? Do you have a pranayama practice? You said you, you learned yeah. from Guruji. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I, I definitely have really explored it on, on my own, and I do a lot of pranayama. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm pretty free with, uh, I do the Ashtanga sequence, but I'm also pretty free with it, like, um, I, I've, I've, I've added this dimension of um, I use cer this certain type of music that's very um, abstract in a way. It's not uh, it's not like songs. It's um, it's very percussive and it's very based on breathing. And so I um, I do that a lot and like I explore um, Bastrika in this really interesting way um, uh, with music and, um, and I spend a lot of long time doing it without, uh, like, I'll do it for, I don't know, eight minutes without the kumbhaka um, and, um, and then I do the kumbhaka afterwards. But I really explore, and not just that, I, with, I do it without music too. Um, did, you, did, you, did you create the music? Because I, I know you, you, yeah, are, yeah. you are a musician, so did you create yeah, the music? I've, no, I, I, I didn't in this. I wish I had. I love the, the, the artists. It's like um, one is, um, who is it? Brian Eno oh, yeah. is one. Um, there's a few of them that are just, they're really interesting. Um, and so it's, it, it's, not, it's really different than like listening to music or having music in the background. It's like, your part, like your breath becomes an instrument. Yeah. Well, I think that's it. That's it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you, yeah. David. Yeah.